Well, the breaking news that uh, we can bring you is that Sajid Javid has been confirmed as the new health secretary. Our political correspondent is at standing by in Westminster for us. Rob. Yes, in many ways, um, I think, Gillian, Sajid Javid was something uh, of a ready-made senior cabinet minister for Boris Johnson uh, to pick and put into um, the health brief uh, without the need for any type um, of wider uh, reshuffle. Of course, his last position in the cabinet was that he took um, on the role um, as chancellor uh, when Boris Johnson moved into number 10. He went into number 11. He, of course, left that position um, over an argument um, about whether he should share his advisory team um, with number 10. There'd been a desire for a shared team to work between number 10 and number 11. Uh, that was received um, by Sajid Javid um, at the time um, as a, a sort of land grab by Downing Street, taking away some of the independence and the power uh, that he would have, uh, which is why he decided to resign and Rishi Sunak uh, came in uh, anyway. That was uh, 13th of February, uh, he resigned. Of course, in the coming weeks, really, the world changed uh, in terms of COVID um, rolling in and the role um, of the Chancellor uh, was morphed uh, from what it had been before uh, as well. Before that, he has a lot of experience um, in Cabinet um, as well. He was the Business Secretary, the Culture Secretary, the Community Secretary, the Home Secretary as well. So someone with a, a lot of top-level Cabinet um, experience. And he will need every inch of it, I think, if um, he is going to... Uh, succeed in this very, very challenging brief. Because, of course, it's not just the fallout from COVID and the pandemic uh, that he will have to deal with. We're not uh, fully out of it yet. But that we are also going through, the NHS is going through um, a, a real pinch point and pressure point in terms of catching up um, with missed operations and missed uh, treatments. Then there is an extensive programme of reform that Matt Hancock uh, had set in motion in the past few months to really reorganise how the NHS runs and reverse many of the uh, reforms, the Lansley reforms pushed through uh, during the coalition years um, under David Cameron. And then on top of that, remember the full title is not just Health Secretary, it's Health and Social Care Secretary. There is a promised reform uh, and plan to social care that has been long promised by many Prime Ministers, including Boris Johnson, and never delivered on. That is something that is getting increased political heat in the recent weeks, and that is something that will be right at the top of Sajid Javid's in-tray. Add into that the Chief Executive of the NHS, Sir Simon Stevens, is also due to leave his post um, this summer. That was something that was far more long planned and not spurred on by uh, any of uh, similar reasons to the context in which Matt Hancock left. So Sajid Javid will be coming in and working with a, a new chief executive um, of the NHS at a point where the NHS has just gone through the biggest challenge it has potentially ever faced, at a point where they are standing on the edge of a huge swathe of reforms. So this is potentially potentially one of the most uh, daunting briefs in government at the moment and potentially one of the most uh, daunting appointments. But he is someone with a lot of experience. He is someone that when he left government, even though it was on the back of um, an argument, a row um, with Boris Johnson and Downing Street about the makeup of his team and his advisory team, he made it very clear at the time that he would be happy to come back um, into uh, government. Um, and that is what we are seeing now, putting put back in uh, uh, one of the most um, prominent um, cabinet positions um, at the moment. And I think it will be interesting to see whether he carries on with uh, those reforms that Matt Hancock had started or whether he tries to go um, in a different um, direction. But uh, I think any time cabinet positions open up or there is rumours of a reshuffle, rumours of Sajid Javid's um, return to office uh, circulate, today was no different, uh, but this time uh, it, they have proved to be true uh, and he is being brought uh, back into cabinet. I imagine this does suggest that there won't be a wider reshuffle, that this will just be um, a a single swap out and swap in uh, rather than um, anything more substantial. And uh, Rob, in terms of um, Sajid Javid being a, a safe pair of hands, he has been out of Cabinet for some time, but is, is that generally how he's regarded? I think he is regarded um, in the current circumstances as probably one of the safer pair of hands you could put in. Uh, if you look at some of the other names that have been floating around, uh, there had been rumours about Nadeem Zahawi, the current vaccines minister, stepping up. But that uh, Nadeem Zahawi is someone that 
although uh, being involved in the very successful vaccine programme, is someone with uh, no cabinet experience, I believe, and only a few years of ministerial experience. So that would have been a very big step up um, for him. Uh, other names linked to it include Michael Gove, someone that when he has gone into other departments, including the Department for Education, um, uh, has been proved to be someone that, although controversial in many ways, can actually get things done, can actually force through agendas. And I think that reputation for Michael Gove is the reason why many people linked him with health, somewhere where you are dealing with huge, huge institutions uh, and bags and bags and bags of red tape. So you really need to be something of a political force in order to bend all of that to your will and try to push through change that you want to see. Ultimately, though, Michael Gove is in another position with bigger challenges on his plate um, as well. Um, and maybe the calculation was in number 10 that actually it was a lot easier to put Sajid Javid in. Uh, I think on the whole as well, it's not necessarily a politically controversial um, appointment. You won't find, I think, too many people um, feeling that their noses have been put out of joint by this because he is someone that has got so much cabinet experience and he is someone that is coming from the outside um, and back in. So. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I think in a way it seemed uh, like uh, the obvious choice, both in the circumstances and looking at Sajid Javid's um, CV. Uh, but that's not to say this is going to be um, an easy job for him. Also, he is someone that doesn't really come um, with too much baggage. And I think that was important to put someone in in that position um, where there is no potential chance um, of anything going wrong in the same vein that it has gone wrong um, with Matt Hancock. So um, I think an indication that they wanted they didn't want this to be long and drawn out. They didn't want this to be a long reshuffle in Downing Street. They wanted this to be a quick changeover. And I expect the messaging that will be put out by um, the government um, this evening and in the coming days will be this is all about uh, a sort of seamless transition. This is all about continuing with the vaccine programme. This is all about reopening uh, next month, July the 19th, that final terminus date as it has been known. Um, and, and this is not about wider reorganisation. This is about putting someone in who has cabinet experience that is seen as a safe pair of hands uh, to carry on where Matt Hancock um, has uh, left off. Okay, Rob, um, just in terms of, of the, the reshuffle, that had been mooted that it was something that Boris Johnson was thinking of, but this obviously circumvents that and there's no need. It's a one bringing in a minister who hasn't been in cabinet and therefore there isn't the need to reshuffle everybody else. So it is a, a very simple one move. Yeah, I think uh, reshuffles have been doing the rounds in the Westminster rumour mill uh, for weeks, if not months now. But this does make it a lot more straightforward. I think the other thing that Boris Johnson may have done is move someone else like Oliver Dowd and his culture secretary into health and then backfill him with Sajid Javid. In the end, he clearly felt the cleanest and the easiest thing to do was to bring someone in who could just fill that vacancy without the need for any of the other reorganisations and the headaches that can come with that. And in Saj Sajid Javid, he has someone that has the CV uh, to do that uh, and someone that I think the party will probably receive on the whole fairly warmly.